Good morning, Philippines. I uh, wanted to offer you a uh, different perspective on some of the construction that goes on. And uh, here at the Cartmel Experience, we try to offer you something new and different about the Philippines, Asia, and the world. So if you enjoy my videos, please don't uh, feel hesitant at all to like, share, and subscribe. We won't cut you off if you don't subscribe. We won't cut you off if you don't click the notification bell, but we want you to pound that like button so we can overcome that algorithm and share what we believe are uh, informational videos that uh, assist people in modern living. So today, I want to talk to you about construction and what uh, it entails after the fact. As a property manager, for close to 40 years, um, I became aware, very much aware of the maintenance required on projects. And when they do a budget and they, for building the project, they also should be providing you with a maintenance budget for the next period of time for, on the estimated life of the project. So if you build a bridge and it lasts 50 years, before you have to tear it down, what's it going to cost? You know, uh, like the Golden Gate Bridge in California, I understand that they they have a constant painting crew that paints there continuously all the time. It never stops. So every year, hundreds of thousands of gallons of paint are put on that bridge over the course of it. And a rough estimate of the cost of maintenance for any project, be it a bridge, a tunnel, a canal, a skyscraper, on average, 95% of the total costs of any project involve maintenance. So for those of you who have considered construction, you may also want to consider renovation and repair because there's huge dollars in that. And in fact, in my, in my analysis of various businesses, Having been a property manager and a, and a uh, uh, shopping mall manager and looking at different uh, avenues of business, one of the most, if not the most, profitable business is building supplies. Uh, we have one little small outlet in Coquitlam, which uh, I was privy to my, uh, my wife's information at the time, having worked for a Canada Revenue Agency. She talked outside of the shop and uh, I realized that that little building supply center was making more money uh, than the entire shopping center across the street from it. Um, so yeah, maintenance, budgets and expenses, I mean that's what they talk about here in the Philippines when they talk about how much it costs to live in the Philippines. It's not just your flight to get here but how to live here. But similarly, you should be aware of the costs of maintenance. And this is what Americans are waking up to now because of the failing infrastructure. And uh, that is simply because the costs, imagine if 95% of the New York subway's costs are maintenance, is it being maintained? Or the highway systems, all those overpasses where the concrete Initially, concrete gets stronger for the first 25 years. I don't know if you know that. Chemically, the bond just gets stronger and stronger. But after 25 years, it starts to degrade. And so at 50 years, it's about as strong as it was when it was first poured. And it just gets downhill after that. So these are rough figures. But you understand the concept that things wear out. And where, where we wear out, we wear down. Even amongst our own demographic, you'll see that What's happening in, in China now is people get old and uh, the young people underneath, there's not enough young people to support the older generation underneath them and their whole society is set to collapse. They're not alone in that. Japan's going through it and America's going through it as our aging population of baby boomers uh, come into play. We better have a replacement generation to take care of the maintenance of them if they want to die with any dignity. Now in a lot of places they won't. They'll end up under bridges and tossed off to the side and and uh, de dealt with abusive uh, uh, senior care homes 
which uh, exploit them for their, for their monetary purposes. But getting back to the, the idea of construction, remember that, that when you build your swimming pool in your house and you don't own it, it ends up owning you and you'll be stuck with a lifetime of chemical supplies, mechanical maintenance, membrane repairs, liability insurance and fencing and things, all kinds of things surrounding the pool itself. And that's just one example. So you can imagine all the plumbing and wiring and, and infrastructure across America. And here's a real kicker, the Carrington event. I've talked about this before, back in the 1800s, before there was a lot of electrical infrastructure in place. The sun gave a solar flare that wiped out all the electrical grid in Australia. I guess that was the side of the world that was pointing towards the sun at that time. But wherever, wherever it hits, it fries all the electrical circuits. And I've cautioned before about how the banking industry is exposed by this. And America's not ready for this. Similarly, uh, I've also mentioned that folks like North Koreans are looking at putting an artificial EMP to create the same effect. So it could be a weapon of war. But the Earth is going to tilt starting in, not the Earth, sorry, the Sun is going to tilt starting in uh, towards the end of April, early May. And it'll take about six months. Where as it switches its poles, as it does every 11 years, there could be an electrical magnetic disturbance that could come our way and could fry the whole grid. But even outside of those catastrophic events, predictions and eventualities, just on a day-to-day -day ongoing basis, it costs billions of dollars just to maintain what's already there. So I think it's time for society to look at what's important. Maybe instead of airline service and runways, a network of high-speed trains might be an alternative. But remember, you got to maintain all the track beds and you'll see train tracks being ripped out all over the place. So maybe the best thing is just to stay home. <laughs> so that's my two cents for today. I'm just cautioning you. We, for those of you who are looking also at like building in the Philippines, maybe you're going to take your entire uh, retirement income and invest in this place and expect to live there for free for the balance of your life and have that for your next generation. Don't forget, it's a tropical climate with an earthquake zone and prone to typhoons. If the wind don't get you and the ground don't shake you, something's sure to come, come along one day. So you're going to have to maintain that home. And maybe your retirement can't handle it, and you might just be better off to let somebody else take that risk and rent. So, if you enjoyed this video, hey, there's 500 more down below it, and you can pick through them, pick and choose. Um, and if, if you find it it's, uh, useful, pass it on to a friend, share, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.